Here at Ben's Garage, we're going green. Welcome back to Ben's Garage. We're in the Hobbit's lair, the kitchen. Not being sexist or anything, but you know. Um, I do use the kitchen quite a bit because I do like a bit of cooking. Anyway, subject to this video, we're going green. <laughs> we're not tree huggers, save the world, this, that and the other. Obviously the world does need saving, but that's a, that's a different video for a different channel. Um, renewable, en e <sighs> renewable energy. So we've just had a shitload of solar equipment turn up. We've got this, which is a hybrid inverter, five kilowatts. I've got this little breaker box for the, the solar panels, the PV panels. So we've got a breaker and a surge protector. We've got this, which is just another electric board for your AC. Um, it's got uh, one, two, three. It's got a circuit for your, for your lights circuit for your sockets it's got a 32 amp and uh, that last one is your breaker i think now i've been looking into solar for quite a long time and it is sort of a bit there's a lot to it now we did look into solar before there was a, a scheme going on a government run scheme um so we, we got in touch with them the bloke came out uh he sized up our roof, bits and pieces, says, yeah, you're eligible for solar. I mean, the roof he was going to put it on was up here, which is not south facing. It's sort of south, southeast or pretty much southeast because east, the sun comes up over there and it sets over there. So it would have caught the sun, but obviously not as well as south facing. Apparently that's not as important, depending on your location. Uh, obviously if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you have them North facing. But anyway, he came out and he quoted us 13 grand. Now, during the day when we was generating electricity from our panels, EDF would buy the electricity from us. And then at night time, when we're no longer generating it, they would sell it back to us. But they were selling it back to us for more than what they were buying it from us. So, and I know there's obviously, they're storing the electric for you, aren't they, basically? Because it was a battery-less system. So you had no way of storing it. So if you couldn't use it in that day, it went back to the grid and then it came back to you over night time. But you had to pay more for it than what they were buying it. So, you know, if if it, at night time, if you could really limit your electric, it might have worked out. But they wanted 13,000 euros, so we sort of said no straight away. He came back with another fee of 11,000, and it was sort of like, nah. And I think he saw the Range Rovers on the drive and thought they've got money, so we'll tap them up a little bit. Now, a few years previous, friends of ours had solar panels put in their roof by EDF or a company subcontractor, um, they didn't have to pay a penny, but they wouldn't see any benefits from those panels for the first 10 years. Now, solar panels are guaranteed for 25 years, and at the end of the 25 years, they're still guaranteed to be about 80% um, efficient. You know, you still get the 80%'s worth of the power claimed. Um, when they're no, they're quite high. Uh, I've got it on a spec sheet. Um, but that they wasn't doing that. They obviously got wise to that one, didn't they? So we've been looking into solar. We do sometimes get power cuts and stuff like that. Not as regular as we did at the old house, which is a bit odd because in the old house we was in a town. Here we're out in the countryside. <laughs> so that's one reason. Um, weird things going on in the world. Don't quite know what's going on. Ben's Garage channel is not for that to discuss. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into that politics or anything like that. But if it got really bad and 
they shut power down, you'd be without power. We have got a generator, but it's not ideal. So the Hobbit likes prepping. She cans all her food. Um, we, we store food, preserve food, we grow food. She likes prepping and she quite liked the idea of solar power. So I started looking into it. Now we're not gonna go off grid uh, because obviously we've got the ovens. My oven's 3.4 kilowatts. I think her, she's got like a range cooker with two big ovens and a, a grill and a top oven. I think combined that's 12 kilowatts if you had them all on at the same time. Um, plus up in the garage, if I'm welding and stuff, I, I don't think you'd be able to, unless you had a, like a really powerful inverter. Now, this is the Grow Watt. Uh, I can't remember the num numbers and names or anything, but it's a five kilowatt inverter. Now these are hybrid inverters. You can run these without batteries. Um, so your solar panels come into your breaker box with surge protector from here. I'm going to have a disconnect out on the solar panel array. So you've got a big disconnect out there. You can switch it off here. So it goes from here into here. This is basically your charge controller, your power inverter, and also a battery charger built in. So you tie this to the grid. You take an AC feed into here and then you can take an AC feed out. So what we're gonna be doing is taking a 32 amp feed from the grid, which is just a larger box version of this, into here, and then we'll have a, a feed coming from here to this box. We can work out what we wanna run on solar. Uh, so we'll run, we'll disconnect from the main board and put into this board uh, things like the fridge and freezer, and bits and pieces. Now the beauty of this is, when you're not generating solar, it can switch over to grid, which is why it wants the 32 amp feed going into here with a nice thick cable. So even if, because you can run this without batteries. Um, we will be getting batteries, but we've got to save up for them because I'm looking at lithium ion batteries and they are quite expensive. Uh, this is 48 volt system. So if you're gonna do it with like, uh, like a, they're not car batteries, but they look like a, they're car battery size, but obviously slow discharge. You'd have to have 412 volts, wired in series to make the 48 volts. These lithium ones, they come in like a rack. Uh, the one I'm looking at is three and a half kilowatts at 48 volts, and they're for 1400 euros. But you can, you can stack them up and then wire them up in parallel. So we can add batteries to the system as and when. But for now, we've got six solar panels, which I won't show you because they're outside in the garage. Uh, they're 1.8 meters long by just over a meter wide. They're made by Trina Solar and they're 380 watts, 24 volt system. Uh, and each panel is an open voltage of about 42 volts. So we're gonna be wiring those in series, six panels, and that will give us about 200 and something volts. Um, and then, they state that if you add them all together, that will give you two, 2,200 watts, but you'll never ever get what they tell you the maximum is. So if we can, on a really sunny day, get 1,800 watts from those six panels, that'd be ideal. Um, we've, had a, we've got the power meter, we've had everything plugged in, so we've, we've taken measurements of how much power we're using. And uh, to start with, this is gonna work a treat. Um, the beauty of this, if five kilowatts is not enough, you can add up to six of these, I think, in parallel. There's a, it comes with these. These are your communication cables, so you can go from this one, loop it up to another one, and you can parallel them. Uh, I, I think it said you can have up to six, so that's 30 kilowatts in your house. <laughs> Obviously, um, they'd all be linked to the same battery setup and you'd have more solar panels coming in on that as well. But that's all something for the future. It's a system that we can get up and running. We can add batteries to it as and when. Five kilowatts is plenty for, I mean, I could run my oven off that. And um, obviously, 
you can set this so that it's solar priority, battery priority, or grid priority. So you can set it so that if the solar and the battery isn't making enough power, it will add extra power f through the grid to bump it up. So that, yeah, this is five kilowatts and it peaks at 10 kilowatts. So for things like your fridge motors and any sort of electrical motor that's got a massive draw when it first starts up, this thing, I think it does 10 kilowatts for about 15 seconds, something like that. Um, yeah, as I say, it is a bit complicated, all this solar stuff, and knowing what to do and, you know, companies that can come out and do it for you are quite expensive. This setup with the inverter, the six panels, the box of bits, I've got... Um, We've got this thing here, which plugs into the bottom of here, so you can, it's a Wi-Fi dongle, so you can monitor your inputs and outputs of what's going on. I've got 20 metres of cable. Um, this is the solar PV cable. Now, I spoke to them on, I sent them an email just asking questions before we actually bought it. They said four mil cable is adequate if your panels are up to 20 meters from the inverter anything further than 20 meters you want six mil uh, now eventually we're going to hopefully have a, a power shed outside but for the time being we're just going to screw it on the wall in there and get it up and running and then once we get the shed done it'll all move out there i thought well we'll get the fit cable because it's not that too much more money for the six mil um, than it is for the four mil. So we've got that 20 meters of each, red and black, and they've got like these um, MC4 connectors, then you can see them. <coughs> so you've got a, a neutral and a, a ne neutral, a negative and a positive there. So they're, they're both different. Um, and they're bare ends on the other ones because that will come in into this box with a surge protector and the breaker come from there up into there so the only thing I've just got uh, another couple of meters of of wire with no ends on it for bits and pieces and I think that's pretty much it um, now I'm gonna look at getting a frame for the solar panels um, they're quite expensive so this whole setup has set us back 1800 euros that's with six panels, the inverter, the Wi-Fi dongle, all the wiring. These bits I bought extra, that's from Amazon. Uh, and the communication cables that come with that. So that's 1800 euros. Yes, it's gonna take a while to pay that back. But the more money that we can save, because our EDF bills, they're, they're so random. And then all of a sudden, they, they do a standing order. Um, and then they take out a set amount each month. If you use more, they'll adjust it at the end of the year. Now they did that to us, and then they took out a massive, well, 400 odd euros, without telling you. <laughs> and it's like, where the fucking hell's that gone? And uh, yeah, so that was a bit of a shock. Uh, they shouldn't really do it. They should at least give you a bit of warning that they're gonna take the money out. But anyway, so they did that. And the bills, now we're on the link, linky meter, it's just like a smart meter. We can go online and see how, what our consumption is. Uh, I think we use on average about 11 kilowatts a day. Uh, and that's things like the fridge and the freezer and everything that's on standby and stuff like that. So having this going with solar panels outside, you'll still generate electric even on a cloudy day, just not as much. And... Um, we can see about getting ourselves a bit more off. We're still going to be tied to the grid, but we're going to be off grid. So I thought I'd just do this little video, just let you know that we're uh, we've got a bit of a new project coming along. Um, whether you're going to be interested in it or not, I don't know. So I thought I'd do this video, let you know what's going on. If there's a lot of interest in it, I will video putting it all together. Uh, there's a hell of a lot of solar videos on YouTube, you know, mostly America um, and Europe, a lot in India and out that way, but uh, not so much 
you know, English people. But um, yeah, if you're interested, let us know in the comments and uh, I'll bring you along when we're installing it and uh, our trials and tribulations of getting it all set up. Hopefully it's going to be straightforward. I think it should be because this is an all-in-one unit, um, which it's superb. I mean, when I was first looking at these solar systems, it, the earlier systems, they were, had like the charge controller was separate, um, your inverter was separate, and then you've got all these other bits and pieces. This is all in one box. It's quite heavy, so we're going to need some good sturdy screws putting it on the wall. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it and start generating some free electricity. Obviously, it's not free because we just had to buy it all, but. Um, it's not end of the world prices at the end of the day. You know, 1800 euros for six panels, an inverter and all these bits and pieces. Yeah, so I know a lot of you are probably saying, oh, you're not really that green because you're driving a Range Rover. <laughs> Correct. Um, I'm not gonna go into all that, that on this channel. This is Ben's garage where we try and fix stuff. But I thought I'd just, Bring you along, show you all this. If there's interest, I'll do a series on it. Um, obviously, we're still working on the Panda and bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, we're still plodding along. And um, so that's it. We're not going green, we're going renewable, en renewable energy. <laughs> so like this video, please give it a big thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this solar stuff as, you know, we'll be learning together because I've only picked up what I've seen on YouTube. So let me know in the comments what you want, if you want to see it. If not, I won't bother. I'll, I'll do little, little bits and pieces over on the Mad Dog Farm vlog channel. Um, but I thought I'd give you the opportunity to see what's going on. If you're interested, I'll do it. So yeah, that's it. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.